So, if you guys don't know, uh, growing up, I was, I thought to myself to be a Democrat, liberal Democrat. I even took like a test to see which, I, uh, which side am I on. And based off of where uh, the things I've said, I'm a liberal Democrat. That was back in 2010, right? Asians are supposed to vote Democrat, right? Because all we keep hearing is that Republicans are the racist ones. They are, they are, the, pa- they are the party of rich white people old white people right democrats want to help poor people that was the message that i got back in 2010 right i didn't vote for obama the first time around i voted for obama the second time around but i used a provisional ballot which doesn't really count and in 2016 uh trump uh was you know he was running for president and he won Uh, i didn't vote then is because i didn't care right i said that if trump wins that's funny if i don't want hillary to win because i think she's crazy and then Trump won, a lot of people lost their god dang minds. A lot of people went crazy. I went to work the following day, and I see two girls. They looked at each other, and they started crying. They hugged each other. I'm like, what the hell is wrong with those girls? And then I found out it's because Trump won. And then they said that they're going to move if Trump won. And it's been eight years, and they're still here. Now, in 2020 was the first time I voted. If you guys didn't know, 2020 was the first time I voted. In 20, uh, 2019, I, I, w- I considered myself um, politically homeless. I didn't, I didn't really care about either the party. And um, I was going to be going on a trip to London. I was going on a trip to London. And then my brother-in-law, he said that, hey, man, you should, you should since you're going to be gone for about a week and you don't live uh, in the best part of town and stuff like that. So have you thought about get, picking up the firearm? And I was like, all right, sure. You know, I'll start getting the firearms and stuff like that. And then I eventually uh, bought my first gun. All right. I officially bought my first gun. It was a uh, Smith & Wesson Shield uh, 9 millimeter. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, I know how to use it. I've gone to the range multiple times during that, uh, at the time when I bought it. And then I'm like, all right, cool. Who should I vote for then? Who should I vote for? I just got into guns. I really, I, I think the firearms are awesome. Who should I vote for? That's most, most pro 2A. During that time, uh, Bernie was running again. And he was talking, uh, he, people asked him, what are your thoughts about firearms? And he said, it's an urban and suburban issue, yada, yada, yada. Uh, definitely not Biden. It's because Biden is the most anti-gun out of the presidential ca- candidates between uh, Republican and Democrat. And the only option was Trump. So in 2020, as a registered libertarian, because I did, I did not find myself to be either side, I voted Trump. I voted down ballot R. R all across is because he was, um, the Republican side is the most to a friendly. I am a single issue voter if trump was against guns i wouldn't have voted for him even though he got rid uh he banned bump stocks he didn't want to get rid of guns altogether the bump stock bans was was really really bad but he didn't want to get rid of guns altogether so that's that was my candidate i voted for trump is because he's the most pro 2a and then that's when i got really really into politics I started to, to get into why, why I'm voting for Trump, right? Okay, if you're the most 2A, what else, what else can, I, can we agree on policy-wise, right? I started looking into all of Trump's things, the stuff he says in the past and stuff like that. And the whole back, you know, I, I, go, I dated all the way back to 2015 when he, started, when he said he was running. And then I was looking at everything that he said. And then I'm like, a lot of people are lying about him. A lot of people were lying about Trump. And then I, people were like, oh, what about the thing he's talking about fine people on both sides? And then, you, and then I watched the video. I'm like, oh, that's sort of bad. And then you watch the entire video. And then you're like, wait, this was taken out of context. I'm like, what if, if, if the mainstream media is lying about that, what else are they lying about? Right? Dems are not, not pro 2A. They're pro 2 gay. <laughs> that is true, right? And in 2020 is when I really, really got into politics. I think for most people as well, maybe. I'm not sure, 100% sure, right? 
And then I'm like, well, the thing is that I feel like I'm making the most money right now. It's unfortunate that um, COVID happened, right? Once after I came back from my London trip, uh, which is my business trip, um, I started doing, you know, getting more into firearms and stuff like that and started like, oh, I really like this. I started doing a lot of stuff. And then like, oh, the only one who's pro 2A is Trump other than the bump stock shit. Yeah, he was tricked into it, right? You guys are saying? So, so that's, that's the reason why, right? And then I got really, really into it and I just, I don't like Joe Biden at all, right? And I found out that Obama is, 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 is he's awful. He's really awful, right? And I found out that like Trump was like the most like, progressive one like traditionally like because he was actually like pro gay marriage even before like Bar barack obama because the only time that barack obama became pro gay marriage is when he ran for office versus trump he was pro gay marriage before he even ran and everyone and then once people started seeing uh like i started like posting a little bit more things on facebook unfortunately uh, people basically started calling me out. I was like, hey, did you vote for Trump? I'm like, well, yeah, I did because I like his policies, right? I started researching him, I like his policies. And he's like, but you're Asian. Why do you vote for him? He hates Asians. He says China and the Kung flu. I went, I got, I got, I got to admit, when, 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 some, when Trump said Kung flu, I thought that shit was brilliant. I thought that shit was fucking hilarious, right? But everyone's like, oh, you... As an Asian person, as a, especially a person who's Chinese, like, you should hate Trump. I'm like, no, I don't. No, I don't. Stop basically, like, pigeonholing me into your ideology just because I'm Asian. Right? And, and that's the reason why I, I don't like what's going on right now with, with the whole policy sense. That's why when, when, it comes to, when it comes, you know, in three, four months from now, like three months from now, we're, I'm going to be voting Trump again. Right? Yeah, Trump, like, Trump lost in, in, in 2020, right? Whether, what, what, you know, they stole it, they cheated, or whatever it is, right? Everything has gotten significantly worse ever since Biden took office. It's just really, really bad. Right? I do want to, re the reason why I'm talking about it is because this right over here, Charlie Cheon, it looks like he's Korean, maybe, based on the last name. He says, so whatever, I'm voting for Trump. I wonder if this guy is a single, uh, pink single issue voter like me that started and then everything changed. Right. And especially during during a 2020, when a lot of Asians were attacked, a lot of Asians were killed right in, in San Francisco and even, um, you know, down here in California and they're robbed, you know, the knockout game or whatever. It's like the Democrats didn't do anything to to help Asian communities. They didn't say anything. Right. They like. What, what did you do? I'm, I'm not sure. The, the, the thing is, that if you guys are the, the progressive side, if you guys are the side that, that talks about progressivism and liberalism and, you know, uh, you, you guys are the most, um, you know, open and you, you guys are the, 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 the side of, uh, you know, like an understanding, like you guys don't give a fuck about Asian people. It, it just sucks. But yeah, I do want to watch this video right over here. It's from Charlie Chion. This I say it. Whatever, I am voting for Trump. See it. Have you ever seen those polls where like a certain percentage of people are planning to vote for Trump and certain other percentage of people Biden and some are undecided? And you think to yourself, uh, who is undecided at this point? Well, me. Until recently. I was going back and forth on it, but I made my decision. Hi, my name is Charlie and I am an independent voter living in the state of Pennsylvania. I have voted for both Democrats and Republican in the same election. The last midterms, I voted Republican for Senate and Democrat for Governor. And unfortunately, as someone who used to hate his guts, I have to eat my own words. Things have come to this point where I'm like, okay, whatever, I'm voting for Trump. And as of this time of recording, there are talks of Biden dropping out because of his infirmity, uh, but really does not matter. No matter who the Democratic nominee, I'm going to vote for Trump. Yep. And you want to know why? Two reasons. I started to like Mr. Trump and I am fed up with the Democratic Party and I am looking to punish them. Let us start there. You guys must think that we are all stupid or that we have the memory of a goldfish. How else can you account for this inartful, clumsy gaslighting to which you are subjecting us? I have been dismayed at the things that Democrats have been telling the public for these past few years that frankly makes no sense to me, especially the dictator talk. 
oh, Trump is a threat to democracy, a danger to the republic. Members of mainstream media saying that. So the reason why, if I'm pretty sure you guys already know, the reason why the Democrats and people on mainstream media who is basically pro-Democrat are saying that Trump is a threat to democracy even after the assassination attempt for Trump. The reason why they keep saying that is because it's, it's to normalize it. It's to basically keep saying it and people will believe it, right? It's a talking point. Trump is a threat to democracy. Even after, even after he got shot in the ear, Trump is a threat to democracy, right? And the thing is, it's sad is because people fall for this shit. And people step, like people do the whole vote blue no matter who. It's, it's so stupid, right? You, it's, if you step out of line, it's like, why? If you're voting for RFK, you, that's a vote for Trump, right? Zachary uh, Levi on, I believe on Instagram, came out and said that he's voting for RFK. And if you actually go into his comments in his Instagram, everyone is saying, wow, I thought you were better than this. Wow, a vote for RFK is a vote for Trump. Wow, I used to look up to you. All these motherfuckers are basically saying this kind of stuff are so stupid. If you're not, if you're not stepping in line, we're going to remove you. So ever since the whole thing with um, Zachary Levi following gays, um, it's like either against gays against groomers or something like that, or, um, or lips of TikTok. I think it's lips of TikTok. The fact, ever since people found out that he followed that, people are trying to find a way to cancel him, right? And now that he came out publicly saying that he's voting for RFK, People are like, we got to get rid of him. He's Zachary Levi is awful. Get him out. It, these people are insane. Pe people who think like that are absolutely insane. That this election might be our last, that Trump will never leave office if he is elected. Are you guys serious? Comparing Trump to Hitler saying America is now headed towards a Christian theocracy. Let's not kid ourselves. This is extremist rhetoric. Not only is this bereft of any attachment to reality, like a trigger warning, it also tends to create the very dangers it purports to forewarn. And that danger is a fissure in our system. This rhetoric that one half of the country wants to elect a dictator and that voting for you is the only way to save democracy, to me, That's has dumb. the same flavor as a closeted gay guy going off on homophobic rants. As in, I think you're projecting. Mm -hmm. But like a closeted gay guy saying something homophobic, you might not be aware that that's what you're doing. You might just be in denial. You might actually believe that you are saving democracy. But in denial, nevertheless, you are. And I think you are in denial because to accept the truth that you're hungry for power, that you are famished for dominion over the narratives that will make its way into our history books, to accept that truth is to accept that you have become the very thing that you hate. Now, I, another thing is, the fact that this video was a couple days ago and um, officially Biden has said that he's not going to be running for re-election. And I believe he, he, he basically showed his face today in some, some, some kind of thing or whatever. And then basically Kamala has been going around. She's basically going on tour right now, giving her things and saying that how she's going to um, you know, do a bunch of things and they're going to make, uh, um, you know, Trump is, um, you know, he's a felon 34 times, you know. Saying that, you know, everyone who, who, who's voting for Trump is a white supremacist. Um, here's the thing. I don't care who you are and what you say to me. If you say that, oh, if you vote for Trump, you're a white supremacist, I'm a white supremacist. If I'm voting, if, I, if you're voting for Trump, you're a racist. Oh, okay, sure. I'm a racist. Okay. Oh, it... What, what else do you got? Is that it? How, what's the other words? A bigot? Homophobe? Transphobe? All right. Yeah, I'm all of those things. I hate, you hate democracy? You want a dictator to win? Yeah, 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 sure. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, and, and what did these people have to say? They, they will run out of everything they have to say. Because the, everyone on the left, most of the people that are crazy enough that's on the left are saying these crazy shit online. Or even in person. Like I said, they are all NPCs. 
they are all NPCs. And what makes matters worse? No one voted Kamala Khan, not Kamala Khan, Kamala Harris in. She was given the spot because she was a diversity hire. And that was basically said by Biden himself. Joe Biden said that I'm going to, I'm going to bring on a black vice president. How about you bring on a person who's actually good, who's actually good at their job? Hi, bring in a diversity hire, all right? She was the first Democratic like, candidate to drop out after, after being destroyed by Tulsi Gabbard. And now she's just basically being handed this position. What happened to the will of the people? These, these Democrats don't care. They don't care. They want you just to shut your mouth and get back in line. That's what they want. They don't want you to question their authority. Because they are actually authoritarians, right? These people are crazy. They bec you either die a villain or you live long enough to, to see yourself become the villain. Like, you, the Democrats used to be a good party. They used to be a good party, right? And what happened? They became the villain. They, they became everything they hate. But here's the thing, though. The foundations and the start of the Democratic Party roots and stems from racism. Let's continue. You are a cliche in a superhero movie. In what universe would Trump become a dictator if he was elected? Not in this one. Well, here's the thing, okay? I do not believe that the election was stolen. Sounds to me like a kooky conspiracy theory. We've all gotten to know Trump's personality, right? He hates to lose or to admit fault. And so when he said that, I thought to myself, oh, this can't possibly be right, even before the courts ruled on this matter. In my opinion, it was a mistake for Mr. Trump to say that without definitive proof, just as Democrats in retrospect were wrong for saying Russian interference in 2016 swelled the election in favor of Trump Hillary. without having any actual proof to show for that incendiary contention. And I wish he would stop saying this, but here's the thing. They say that action speaks louder than words, right? You all remember when Trump was president. And I gotta tell you, what I saw was a far cry from the actions of a dictator. Think for one about his signature immigration policies. I remember when he tried to alter some of these federal regulations that raised the bar for green card applicants, the public charge rule, for instance. Under that rule, you would not have been eligible for a green card if you went on welfare as an immigrant and cannot support yourself. His administration went through the ordinary rulemaking process, the notice and comment period, and when challenged in the courts by state attorney generals of democratic states, his administration obeyed court orders to halt implementing his new rules. Now here's the thing. If Trump was actually a dictator, like legit di dictator, the Republicans had the House, the Senate, and, and the presidential seat. They held all three. If Trump was a legit dictator, he would have done dictator shit, but he didn't. The, the left and the Democrats paint this narrative that he is a dictator, comparing him to Hitler, comparing him to Mao, comparing him to Stalin, saying that he's a Russian asset, saying that he's a white supremacist. All of that thing, all of that was a lie and fabricated. And they keep saying it over and over again is because... The longer you say it, it becomes true in a lot of these weak, illed, and weak, smoothed brain people's minds. They think that what they're saying is true. It's because they say it so much. Tell a lie over and over and over again, and they start to believe the lie. Same thing with the wall. In fact, even though much of his agenda was frustrated by litigation, as is the case with all modern presidencies, there was no single instance where his administration disobeyed a court order. Does that sound like a dictator to you? Do you have so little faith in our system of separation of powers and checks and balances that you actually think that Trump would rule for life? You're not living in the real world. And even as I make a distinction between speech and action and tell you that his past action does not indicate that he would become a dictator if he took office once again, I also question whether his speech, brash and populist as it may be, reflects the will of a dictator. Take January 6th, 
okay? You are all calling it an insurrection. And if Trump was a dictator in the making, that would have been the time for him to egg them on. Did he do that? Because what I remember was no, Trump releasing a statement, do not be violent. If you want to protest, do so peacefully. But then the media, even today, trying to hang Trump and Trump supporters vis-a-vis -vis guilt by association. Do you disavow the actions of January 6th, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, you guys, give it a rest. Enough. And here's the thing. What happened after he put out, go home. If you can protest peacefully, go home. Do not, he basically said, don't do it. They banned Trump from Twitter. They banned him. It's because Trump was telling them, go home. Do it peacefully if you're going to protest, right? The reason why they banned them is because they got to set up the narrative. They got to set that shit up. Because if Trump is off Twitter, he cannot rebuke the actions of the people that were actually bad. People who were actually like did stuff and hurt people, right? I'm not saying that J6 wasn't bad. It was, it was sort of bad, right? It's was, it was some people, you know, you know, Ashley Babbitt got shot. That's, that's pretty bad. So the thing is, they had to shut him up. Universally, everywhere. Just, they just got rid of him, right? So Trump can't say anything, cannot rebuke anything. And that's how they did it, right? And then they used the J6 over and over and over and over again to paint this thing saying that it's the worst thing in the world. J6 is worse than 9-11, these people are crazy, man. With this mass hysteria dictator talk, the public is not buying it. If Trump gets elected, he will leave after his term is up and America will keep chugging along. It's not going to turn into North Korea. My God. How about this? If Trump gets elected and does not leave after four years, I will buy the first person to comment, I told you so, a car, toy model. <clears throat> I challenge you to ask yourself whether this vote for me or you'll get a dictator talk is at least as damaging to the vitality of our system of government as saying the election was stolen. But the gaslighting does not just stop there. The Democratic Party has also been lying to us about Biden. Okay? So it was clear to me and a lot of folks from years back that Biden was not cognitively fit to hold office. How was it clear? Video footage. But what do we get for years from Democratic operatives. Oh, Biden is as fit as he ever was. He's dark Brandon. He's Arnold Schwarzenegger after getting a pump in. It's Trump who's- When he's talking about a pump, he's talking about like a, a blowjob from Kamala? Like a handy J from Kamala? That I can see. That he's like, hey, hey Kamala, get your sweet Indian Jamaican ass over here. And touch my wiener. Ah, ah, where's that ice cream? Cognitive function is on the decline. What do we get from the media? The reason why you're thinking this might be because of ageism. The bias was clear. They were telling us for years, don't believe your own eyes. Oh, the crowd was not chanting F Joe Biden. They were saying, let's go Brandon. <laughs> what do you call that? Ow. Oh. Fake news? Hey, just a quick question. When did our news media lose its backbone and become the agitation and propaganda wing of the Democratic Party? 2016. Biden fumbling on the stairs of Air Force One or rambling incoherently. 2016. Oh, that's a cheap fake. Not a deep fake, but a cheap fake. It's real, but also not real because it's taken out of context. Again, this is how little the Democratic Party thinks of the voting public. And then, after the most recent debate performance, when the obvious could no longer be denied without losing all credibility, the media's take is, oh, most recently, it seems like his health declined greatly. We should think about a new candidate. Are you serious? You let this drag on. Are you going to take some responsibility for gaslighting the public for years up until shit hit the fan? Fuck no, man. Media does not take any accountability. Absolutely not. Rachel Maddow, freaking Don Lemon, a freaking Brian Stelter. If whoever's on the news right now, 
All of them are fucking crazy. They're batshit crazy. Man, they're so batshit crazy. They fucking... They fucking eat the bat shit dropping from the sky and that's how they get coronavirus. Is any member of the media going to get the sack after causing untold damage to the country by abusing the public's trust? Or what about Biden's handlers? No? <laughs> Didn't think so. So... Punishing the Democrats for this misbehavior, that's what I'm looking to do this election cycle. They think because they're opposing Trump, they can mistreat the voting public and get away with it. Nah. Treat us with respect. Don't treat us like we're stupid. Come November, I will vote a straight Republican ticket with Trump at the top. Funny thing about life, I would never have imagined saying something like this a few years ago. I probably wouldn't recognize my future self. I'd look at my future self and go, who the hell are you? But here we are. And so that leads me to talk about liking Trump. So here's the thing. When Trump first came onto the political scene in 2015, I hated his guts. I could not stand him. For years, I hated him. I was in college, I was young, inexperienced, and I could not understand why he was winning one Republican primary after another. And I was like, what do people see in him? I do not get it. And it took me a few years of living to realize, despite what I was being told over and over, what he's proposing, uh, his agenda, it's not extreme at all. And that his rhetoric was only racist insofar as you projected racism into it. And why do that? because you oppose his agenda. And then a few more years had to pass before I actually started liking him. So let me explain it to those of you who still don't see it, what I learned. First, with regards to his agenda that you consider to be extreme, you are editorializing. As in, there are ways to interpret that agenda to be rather plain, but you're injecting your belief system and hyperbole to make it sound extreme. Yep, right? The, like the, the, there's a whole bunch of things that Trump has done that is good. A lot of them, right? The, the United Emirates thing, right? Like the peace in the Middle East. That thing was massive. That, 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 that was crazy, right? And then you have like, uh, like Trump did like drone strike shit. Like, like, like he, it's, let, let's, let's say that he, he, he actually did it, all right? So, but the thing is that overall, did he build the wall? Technically he didn't. Yes, but he didn't finish it, right? He should finish it, right? Uh, did he, did, but he did, he helped a lot of black people. He got a lot of black people out of prison. He probably helped more black people than Obama did. Not probably, but probably actually did it, right? And most recently, he took a bullet to the ear. He was literally like a couple, maybe like inches away from death. And the fact that, like I heard this, heard the saying somewhere, if, if you can... If you can, if Trump can take a bullet for you, you should be able to vote for him. The Democrats are liars. They're cheaters. They're like liking Trump is because the reason why my wife lo likes Trump and my like a bunch of people from from my wife's side like likes Trump is because he says all the things that aren't political. He says whatever is on his mind. And the thing is that you cannot buy Trump out. That's one huge reason. Trump does not need, like he, he, he Trump has all the money he, he ha like he doesn't need it. You cannot buy him out, right? Of, uh, of course, what does the Democrats do? They try to drain him off of resources, right? Get him freaking tied up in court hearings. You know, freaking like, trying to indict him and like all that kind of stuff it's it's insane so the fact that they went after him so hard and the thing is that i'm one for liking the underdog and the thing is that trump is a fighter and like yeah he's old don't get me wrong but he's absolutely way more spry than biden is and way more cognizant than cackling kamala harris is so I'm not voting for that. I'm not voting for her. Whoever they pick for Democrat, whether or not they bring in Big Mike or whoever, Hillary, especially, for, like I'm not voting for anyone in Democratic side. Okay, take child separation, for instance. When Trump began separating migrant children from their parents for detention, what do we hear? Oh, he's putting children in cages. That's what I also parroted mindlessly. But here's another way you could see it. When you break the law, 
you are subject to detention. And if you, the guardian, is under detention and there exists no one to take care of the minor, the state must step in and take custody of the minor. Happens all the time if you are a parent and you get arrested for a crime. Furthermore, if because you're caught crossing the border with a minor, the government is then obliged to release you into the interior, that creates rather a perverse incentive structure for minors to be used and abused as a human shield by some who only pretend to be the parents of the minors to get into the United States. That sure sounds different than he's putting children in cages. You tell me which sounds like a more reasonable interpretation and which one more hysterical. Entertain the possibility that those his cages, in lockstep with a huge portion of the population sounds extreme to you because perhaps, just maybe, you hold extreme views yourself. Absolutely. Sweetness of a mild variety tastes bitter to the sugar addict. And then comes his rhetoric. Oh, he's a racist, they say. It's so funny. I'm almost 30 now. I spent half of my 20s in school and the other half out in the real world. I went to a great college, an elite law school, rubbed shoulders with some really impressive people. But on the other hand, the other half of my 20s, I had also worked in the food court as a bank teller, uh, worked as a server for many years across a few Korean restaurants. And I'm still working part time as a server. And I got to tell you, the way people talk between these two worlds is night and day. And what I mean by that is they say, how the hell does Trump appeal to the working class? He's a billionaire born with a silver spoon in his mouth. Well. Here's the thing I didn't know in my younger years. The way he talks, the things that he says that you think are unfathomably outrageous, you should know this is how the working man talks. You would know had you ever held the job of the working man. The comments that would compel the- Yeah, because Trump is not a politician. He's not. He never was. He, you know, his dad gave him money, got a start. He used that money to make more money. And now he has like a fucking like a dynasty. These people are going to Trump will never will never understand you. And what he does is because. Because he knows what the fuck he's talking about. That's the reason why Trump, Trump knows how to talk is because like like right there. Trump is the businessman. Trump knows how to talk. Trump knows how to reason with people. And that's the reason why he knows how to talk with China. It's like, oh, if you're going to do this shit, we're going to put on a shit ton of tariffs on you. If, if you're going to do this, you know, like, I, I would do crazy shit, man. You don't know. You know, like, the, the, the fact that says that it's, a, oh, if Russia, if you take Ukraine, I'm going to bomb Moscow. China, if you take Taiwan, I'm going to, ba I'm going to bomb Beijing or Shanghai. Immediately that day. Putin calls Xi Jinping. He's like, President Xi, did Trump say that he is going to bomb? Did he say he's going to bomb you too? He's like, oh yes. That crazy old man said that he's going to bomb me. Wait, he said he's going to bomb you too? Yeah, he's he going to bomb me. He's like, oh, but we don't think he's going to do it. But we shouldn't test him because he's crazy. Exactly. And that's exactly what Trump is. He's a, he's a guy. He's the bully for the U.S. He's a bully. He's, he's our bully. He bullies the other countries. That's why people like him. That's why a lot of the working man, the, normal, the normies like him is because he was our bully. Of course, you get these narratives, oh, grab her by the pussy. All these kind of other shit, whether or not it's true. The thing is that the man has done an amazing job his first term. Yep. Uh, upper crust to clutch their pearls are said by rote by the working man. And guess what? Most people are not looking to be offended anywhere and everywhere. Most people see the reality of intergroup differences with regards to race or sex and treat it as a matter of fact. Most people need not self-censor to keep up appearances in order to hobnob within the Hunger Games capital we call polite society. And when you say that Trump is being racist for saying something that the ordinary person would say, the ordinary person takes note, for they know what's in their own heart. They think to themselves, it's not hateful to acknowledge reality. They want to punish Trump 
for speaking the truth. Take yep. the thing he said when he first ran for office almost a decade ago. He was talking about Mexicans crossing the border. At that point in time, the illegal immigrants that were coming in were mostly from Mexico. Coyotes. Nowadays, we have people from all over the world pouring into our country from the southern border. Thanks to Mr. Biden. Trump was saying, look, Mexico is not sending their best. They're bringing in drugs. They're bringing in crime. They're raping people. And some, I assume, are good people. Well, yeah, it's the truth. But at the time, the media was saying, oh, he's calling Mexicans rapists and criminals. Yeah, see, yeah, the media, media is the, media is your enemy. The Democrats, the, the, the Democrats are just a different vert. The media is the true enemy here, right? And, and the thing is, they have to say all these crazy rhetoric. They have to, right? They can't, they don't want Trump to look good in any way. Hell no. The thing, yeah, he's not wrong, exactly. But the thing is that he's not calling every immigrant, right? Like CNN are saying, oh, he's saying every immigrant from Mexico is a rapist. He's not saying everyone. He's calling the people who are trafficking people, who are raping, murdering people. Those, the coyotes, like all of them, the, the, like it's now... I, I don't get at least like two weeks that goes by that I hear that like I don't hear that the someone that came over from the border has killed someone, has murdered someone, right? See, he, oh, so-and-so came in, uh, in in April of last year. The, the, the feds knew about him, but he came in and murdered someone. Whose fault is that? Oh, it's Biden's fault because he, he said that when I, get in, when I become president, the border is going to be open. And they flooded that shit. And they're still doing it. They're still doing it. And here's the thing. The reason... The Democrats are basically saying, Hey, people that came in illegally, I will allow you to stay here. But remember, we're going to also allow you guys to vote. Illegal immigrants. The, the illegal, illegal. It's illegal. We let you vote in November. Just remember who allow you to be in the USA. Just remember who let you in when you vote. Okay? Do not vote for yellow man or orange man. Vote for a Democratic Party because we let you in illegally. Just remember. And the thing is that they did, they, they, they're basically trying to have illegal immigrants vote, which is insane. Which is absolutely insane. It took me years to realize, no, that's not what he's saying at all. You're just reading into it what you want to. What he's saying is, if you have an unchecked border, you have no idea what kind of bad elements are pouring in. And by the coincidence of the circumstances, most people that were pouring in happened at the time to be Mexican. There's got to be some good people coming in, but also bad people. And we should be worried about the bad. There's nothing racist about what he said. Or take the kung flu remark i love that i love kung flu yeah it was racial but it's also a joke yes it's a pun i love it i was a is this so punny oh yeah kung flu oh yeah from china kung flu oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh so funny oh it's a pun uh punny i like it i thought it was hilarious at the time i don't think i would be now i think it was the environment i was in I was in a school with a bunch of woke people. Had I been at the restaurant, I think I would have been laughing at it with all the other Korean servers. Why do I think that? Because we laugh at things like that all the time. And so the guy can tell jokes. Yeah, people like that. Makes him relatable despite the huffing and puffing of the uppity idiots that appear on national television and act offended on behalf of the country. So it took me a minute, but he won me over. That's my guy for the election. What you see as hateful, some people see as truths now right around now is the time that some people go hey boot liquor how does that boot taste jokes on you because i have a shoe fetish <laughs> just kidding sort of uh but really right, what, what, you're an i'm idiot. gonna stop this, this is video right now when stop any racial minority stop expresses video. support for trump or anything conservative that's the kind of comments they get from other racial minorities and liberal white people 
but that's the real racism, if you think about it. The idea that you have to, because of the color of your skin, support certain policies, candidates, or way of thinking, that's textbook racism. Yep, exactly. 100%. It's because, hey, you're Asian. You need to vote for Trump. You're Asian. You, should, you, you, uh, you need to vote for Biden. Bitch, I vote for whoever I want. Fuck you. Oh, you're, if you ain't voting for me, then you ain't black. Fuck you. It's so stupid, man. Like, hey, you, do you know you're black, right? Chelsea Handler, the audacity tell, saying that to 50 Cent. Oh, you, you know you're black, right? You can't vote for Trump. The fuck? Dumbass, dumbass, crazy ass Chelsea Handler telling me who I can or cannot vote for? Shut up. Shut the fuck up, pussy. You don't tell me what to do, man. You don't... You, you shouldn't vote for Trump. It's because you live in California. And Trump is a racist. He said Kung Flu. That's pretty racist. I'm like, I'm going to vote for him even harder. Can we cut that shit out? Oh, I'm the bootlicker. The Democrats' DEI initiatives are foreclosing for our young Asian students the possibility of earning a seat in selective high schools through their own merit. Yep. Replacing our young students with racial minorities they deem to be more deserving. Yep. And I'm... All the, I, I talked about this before. Ivy League schools, Harvard, all that kind of stuff. It's like, oh, we should bring in more black people, Mexican people, because you Asians are too smart. There's a, there's, we see too many Asians in UCLA. You see a lot of Asian. We see a lot of Asian people in Harvard, Stanford, Columbia. We see too many Asian. We, it's, we got to make it harder for you guys and easier for the other guy. Fuck you. I'm the bootlicker. What was that saying about pot and kettle? I've been saying this for a while now, you guys. The woke left is not our friend. They are the enemy of the Asian people. Why? Yep. Because our achievement in these past few decades, surpassing whites in many metrics, is a pebble in the shoe of their narrative that a white supremacist system is to blame for others lagging behind, for which they claim affirmative state action is the sole remedy. Not true. The problem is pathological culture within these other groups. That is something no government action can solve. Look, I'm surrounded by people who hate Trump. And there are people I love dearly who still cannot stand Trump. Yep. And just because I changed my mind, I'm not going to now go after them and say, how can you support Joe Biden? Uh, they have their reasons for opposing Trump and supporting Biden and vice versa. I have my own. And my love for them has not changed one bit. And I don't think their love for me has either. I feel pretty secure in my relationships. That's what living in a healthy, vigorous, free society is supposed to be about. No one side has all the answers all the time. I really believe that. You want to turn down the temperature? Uh, I say, don't look to Trump. Look to the people who say that a vote for Trump is a vote for fascism. Yep. Or that this election might be the last. I'm going to vote for Trump because you're saying things like that. I resent it. And hey, I am open to voting Democrat in the future, as I have in the past, but only if the candidate in question renounces explicitly. Yes. Let's say if we get a Democratic um, uh, candidate that says that they're pro-gun. All right. You have my attention. What else? Right? Let's say, let's say we have a person like that, that who's like super pro-gun, super pro-2A, and First Amendment. What else? What, what other policies? You, got, you, you have me hooked. What else? But the thing is that the Democrats has been doing their darndest to try to strip American citizens of firearms and the ability to protect themselves for a very long time now, okay? I'm not saying that the Re Republicans haven't. It's because we all know that Reagan is not as great as everyone says. He, he was the one who got rid of the fact that you can't buy full autos anymore. Motherfucker removed it. It's his fault. Has he done other great shit? Yeah, but the fact that, like, I'm pretty much a 2A absolutist. I want people to be able to have nukes. I want people to have tanks. 
Tanks are expensive, man. I went online, look at a tank. It's like $150,000. God damn. And unequivocally, the woke left, whom I hate. And you never know. The future, depending on how things unfold, I may not like Trump later. The point is, what I learned from hating to now liking Trump is, you should be steadfast in your beliefs. Commit to them. They're from the vigor of life will flow. But be open to the idea that your future self will not be the same as your current self. In fact, that's preferable. So embrace it. That signals growth. You will experience growing pains. The guilt that you feel that you are turning into someone whom your former self does not recognize. And people who don't welcome the change will call your growth regression. But I've also learned all of that fades. Time heals all wounds. And you'll grow stronger. Anyways, that is to say, at this point in time, I like Mr. Trump. And just as importantly, I am looking to punish the Democrats. Yep. And since I've committed to this course of action, I will so advocate for it publicly. I encourage all of you like-minded independents, especially in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin, to do the same. This election cycle, punish the Democrats for putting our lives in jeopardy by allowing millions to flow in from all over the world through the southern border under their gate-kept name of compassion. Punish the Democrats for gaslighting the public about a non-existent threat to the Republic so they may remain in power. Punish the Democrats for having lied to us about Biden's infirmity for years, only to have acknowledged what the public has known all along to the end of And most importantly, punish the Democrats for allowing themselves to be a safe haven for the far-left woke elements within our society who genuinely dislike the country, are chanting death to America on this soil, yep. and thirst for its destruction. One meritocratic system at a time. What can I say? How else can I end the video other than to say, go America. And let's go Donald Trump. It's a good video. It's a good video. Um I I get where he's coming from too, right? From like like I said, growing uh like growing up in the Asian household. Hearing that my dad says, oh, we're poor. We don't have a lot of money, right? We don't have a lot of money. So th there's a video chat. There you go. I'm going to give it a like right over there. Go and give this guy a like. Uh, it's actually really, really good. Uh, really good video. And uh, it makes a lot of sense, right? Like, b given the fact that growing up, I was that you're Asian. You have to vote Democrat. It's because, especially the fact that you are, you're poor, right? You have to vote Democrats because the Democrat side are the ones that actually take care of you. The Democrat side actually um, knows and understands poor people. They help the poor people. And that is a freaking lie.